Hi, I'm James Dickey, Senior Counsel for the Upper Midwest Law Center, and welcome to Minnesota Law Reports. UMLC is your voice fighting for you in the courts, and today I'm coming to you direct from just outside the steps of the Minnesota Supreme Court courtroom, where I just finished arguing in the landmark case, Snell versus Walls, which challenges whether Governor Walls had the authority to issue a peacetime emergency related to COVID-19 in the first place. So the argument just happened, like I said, and I'm here to give you the download on what went down. As usual, the arguments in the Minnesota Supreme Court take place in the Capitol and uh, in the second floor uh, historical courtroom, which is a beautiful courtroom, a lot of history there. And it, today there were five justices out of the seven available. Uh, Justice G. Barry Anderson was not able to be there, I, I assume because of illness, but we're, we wish him bet the best and hope he recovers quickly. And Justice Carl Procaccini did not take any part in the decision. Uh, he's a new justice who just joined the bench and uh, had to recuse himself from this particular case. So the five justices who were there were Chief Justice Natalie Hudson, Justice Paul Thiessen, Justice Ann McCaig, Justice Gordon Moore, and Justice Margaret Chudich. Um, the, the argument was lively. Uh, we started out with our introduction, as we always do, and I think it went over pretty well in terms of explaining what we're asking the governor to do. And what we are asking the governor to do is very simple when it comes to a COVID-19 or any other uh, viral pandemic outbreak type of emergency. It is to show the people of Minnesota when an emergency is declared that all of the statutory requirements, all the, the things that the law requires are in fact met using some sort of evidence to support that. And so what we have said is that in order to support the existence of a peacetime emergency, what the governor should do is obtain an affidavit, a sworn statement, right, that demonstrates that the emergency does in fact endanger life, it endangers property, and that local government resources, whatever county it may be, are not adequate. What we have argued in the Supreme Court is that in this case, the, uh, the, the COVID-19 emergency did not endanger property by virtue of it being a virus. And the governor did not show any evidence throughout the entirety of the existence of the pandemic that in fact, the virus itself inherently endangers property. We think that that makes it a not subject to a declaration of an emergency. If the governor were able to find evidence that COVID-19 by its nature endangers property, that may be a different story, but that never happened. And so future governors should have to show that a viral outbreak like COVID-19 does in fact endanger property. And if the legislature does not want to require that a viral outbreak endangers property, the legislature can take action to fix that. But that's not what the law says. The second argument we make is that COVID-19 and all pandemics cannot be declared on a statewide basis just because the governor makes the statement without any support that local government resources are not adequate to deal with it. And what does local government resources mean? It means a city or a county doesn't have government resources, whether that's police, fire, EMT, whether that is local government hospital beds to deal with the problem. In this case, there was no evidence provided by the governor that local resources, in fact, were inadequate. And we have, for example, cited in our amended petition that we filed way back in 2020 with the court that in August and September of 2020, it was pretty clear from public reports by the Star Tribune and others that our local hospitals were prepared for not just the pandemic, but what they called the twindemic of COVID-19 and the flu. So with that kind of evidence, what needs to happen is that the governor needs to identify what counties in Minnesota are experiencing a significant problem where the gov local government resources are not adequate to deal with it. Because if they are adequate to deal with it, then what's the point of an emergency in the first place? So these are the arguments that we made. Um, the governor and his team at the attorney general's office uh, made arguments basically saying that this is way too, too much for the governor to have to do, to have to gather evidence to support his statements. And to be fair to uh, the governor and to his team, from my, my sense of what happened in the courtroom today, it did seem like the justices of the Minnesota Supreme Court were likely to side with the governor. Now, that does not mean that's necessarily going to happen. And as a matter of course, sometimes the justices of the Minnesota Supreme Court will make decisions that actually clarify the law. So even if, in this instance, we don't win the case with a knockout blow, we will still get a decision from the court that clarifies the law, that allows future legislatures to fix the law, 
uh, if, if it continues to be a problem and allows for the governor to have more guidance from the court as to what's required to uh, comply with the Minnesota Emergency Management Act. And so while we bring cases that we think we're going to win because that's what we're in the business of doing, the fact is that even sometimes when we don't win cases, we end up getting a decision from a court that clarifies for everybody in Minnesota exactly what the law is. And it's because of support from people like you who donate to us and, and give us the wherewithal to do this that we're able to take on cases that other law firms, private law firms, won't take on because there is no pot of money at the end of the rainbow for some of these cases. And so we are proud to represent the appellants in this case, uh, Drake Snell and company, uh, 16 different Minnesota small businesses, churches, and individuals. We're grateful for their support and partnership as part of this case. And whether we win or lose the case, we are happy to have brought it. And we think that it's going to be a landmark and important case for the people of Minnesota. And we're also grateful to the Supreme Court for taking this issue on because it's not often that they take cases on. And so leaving our uh, argument today in the Minnesota Supreme Court and our challenge to the governor's emergency powers aside, um, I'm going to report to you now on the other issue that has been in the news recently related to UMLC and our friends at Center of the American Experiment and Take Charge. And that is the terrible criminal act of arson perpetrated against UMLC, our third floor offices at our building in Golden Valley, and also against American Experiment and Take Charge. Um, make no mistake, this is a uh, ideologically motivated, uh, hateful action against us just because we stand up for you, the regular Minnesotan, in court and seek to uphold the law and the Constitution. That's the bottom line. This will not deter our work. As, I'm, as you can see, I'm right here in the Minnesota Supreme Court today, and I just made what I hope is a good argument to the court. Um, but the fact is, we certainly do uh, feel the target on our back, and uh, we know that that's going to happen when you stand up for other people and put yourself out in public. You can't help but feel a, a bit uncertain when you have that kind of target on your back, but it doesn't matter to us. At the end of the day, we're going to keep doing our work and we will not be deterred by these criminals. We're working closely with federal law enforcement to give them as much information as we're able to, to help uh, arrive at the capture and conviction of those who committed this terrible act of domestic terrorism. With your support and help, uh, we will continue to uh, work remotely at this point, and we're also looking for a new potential office space that will house us and will allow us to continue our good work and our collaboration in person um, among myself, Doug Seaton, our president and founder, Ali Howell, who you've seen on this program, and our other employees and attorneys. So we thank you for your support in this time, and we ask that you continue to do so. We can still receive mail if you decide you want to send us a check to our normal address, but we would recommend that at this point that you send us donations online at umlc.org slash donate. Thank you again for your support in this really difficult and trying time for us. As you can see, we are going to continue to uphold your rights and liberties and fight for liberty and the rule of law regardless at Upper Midwest Law Center. That's it for today, and we'll see you next week on Minnesota Law Reports.